You are now listening to Sorel Gore MD. Sorel Gore MD. First off, I just want to say thanks for the fan mail. It's an inspiration to keep creating more content. So I've been reading these forums, and there's a lot of misinformation out there. After my fellowship, I know, not just think I know, I know I went to a top 10 IR fellowship. So without further ado, here are the top four reasons that I know that I went to a top 10 IR fellowship. Reason number four is healthcare systems. My fellowship wasn't just based at a single hospital. My fellowship was based at a healthcare system. I was forced to learn about healthcare systems. I rotated at a total of six unique training sites, a 600 bed US News and World Report ranked liver transplant and major university hospital, a 500 bed mixed university and private practice hospital in an urban setting, a 1,000 bed historic safety net hospital and busy level one trauma center, a 400 bed community hospital staffed by university physicians, a 500 bed nationally ranked pediatric hospital, and a 500 bed VA medical center. So as a fellow, I had to adapt to each situation. I had to relearn the medical record. I had to reintroduce myself to techs and nurses, and I had to learn the flow. I had to learn the efficiencies of each system, and I had to learn how to get around the inefficiencies of each system. When I go out into practice, I'm fully confident that I can adapt to the situation at hand, and that's because my training wasn't just based at a single hospital. My training was based at a healthcare system. Next up is name and prestige. This is a difficult subject, but unfortunately, these things matter. You're more likely to buy a burger from McDonald's than you are from Jim's Burger Shack down the road. And here's the truth. Some of these so-called top 10 IR fellowships have absolutely no name recognition outside of IR. Fortunately for me, my fellowship had a nationally recognized name. And to be honest, that's all I got to say about that. Next up, diversity and faculty. My fellowship program boasted 16 faculty. That's 16 distinct personalities, 16 different people to take criticism from. And at a time where gender diversity is being actively sought after, I had a chance to train with three different female faculty. From those faculty, several training programs were represented, including the following. Northwestern, Miami Vascular, Mount Sinai, UVA, Washington, Duke. I even had one faculty member who was a fully trained vascular surgeon who practiced 100% IR. So I got to learn how to do the same thing 16 different ways. 16 different ways to drop a filter, 16 ways to do a tips, 16 different ways of sewing in a port, things that I can't forget. Well, working with that vascular surgeon, just watching how his hands moved. He would work carefully and methodically, just being very gentle and silky smooth with his hand movements, and showed me that doing a procedure, it's not about just doing the procedure, right? You have to make it look good because this is how you let other people know that you're in control, and this is how you let a patient know that they're being cared for. I had two faculty who were brought up with a really rigid, rules-based approach to IR, and this came in handy. See, as a fellow, when you're starting out, it's hard to know what catheter to pick when you're doing a visceral intervention. You have so many choices. You have a sauce, you have a Cobra, you have a Sim2 glide cath. But because of that rigid approach to training and what it instilled upon me, when it's 2 o'clock in the morning and I'm managing a GI bleed, I know exactly what catheter to ask for. 5 French Angio D. Mickelson. Why? Because that's the big way. The number one reason I know I went to a top 10 fellowship, the cases. All right? Make no doubt about it, the most important factor in your IR fellowship is the number and variety of cases that you're exposed to. So what did I see? Well, I saw a ton of Y90 and taste to the point where doing a radial approach celiac angiogram is pretty much a reflex move, and I'm just trying to learn now the science behind the trials and the finer arts of patient selection. Kyphoplasty. I saw this procedure stop severe uncontrolled pain and give people their life back and because of that other factor, because of all those numerous faculty from different institutions, I know personally this is a procedure that is not being taught at several of the other quote-unquote top 10 fellowships. TIPS. Now, it's no secret that TIPS is one of the most difficult IR procedures. But fortunately for me, I was at a high-volume center to the point where I feel comfortable saying I can provide this procedure to my future patients. UFI, uterine fiber embolization. I was fortunate to work with two female faculty members who taught me the A to Z of managing UFI patients, from patient selection, to post-procedural pain management, and everything in between. IVC filter placement and removal, including the use of lasers to help remove those filters that are really stuck inside the body. And there are plenty of things that I'm leaving out. So, like I said, I'm 100% confident I went to a top 10 fellowship. I'm still trying to process what I went through. I've shared with you what I know. So I'm going to ask you for a little something in return. It's not that hard. 
All I need is a like, a share, a subscription to my channel, or maybe you think I got it wrong. Well, feel free to throw down in the comments section, and I'd be happy to meet you there and set things straight. I'm Sorel Garmdi. I'm just trying to keep it real. Peace out. Take care. See you later.